This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. I believe if you'll start praising God today, it'll cause you to focus more on God's Word. It'll cause you to focus more on what God has to say about some things rather than you focusing on your problems. Everybody's got some issues, but you've got to decide what you're going to focus on. And praise is going to help direct your focus on God's promises. Get ready for change. The message of grace is coming to a city near you. Join Creflo Dollar in Los Angeles, California on January 27th and Houston, Texas on February 23rd and 24th. Seating is limited, so register now. Log on to www.creflodollarministries.org to check out the full 2023 Change Experience Tour schedule. Pick up your phone and call the number on your screen or scan the QR code right now to register. See you in your city. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. Tonight, I want to teach you about the effects of praise. The effects of praise. Now, I want you to listen to this as we go through the word on this tonight. Uh, the amount of time you spend praising God, think about that. Look at and evaluate your life where, where that is concerned. How much time do you spend praising God? Uh, is that something that you do only when you're in the church building? But, but, you know, what is the motivation behind me spending time in praising God? Well, that's what I want to try to accomplish here tonight. The amount of time you spend praising God is the greatest single indicator of where you are in your relationship with the Lord. The amount of time you spend praising God is the greatest single indicator uh, of where you are in your relationship with God. It, it'll help you to locate where you are in your relationship with God. And, it, you know, as far as staff and I are concerned, it's, it's everything starts at that relationship we have with God, and it goes uh, from that particular point. You know, there are times of conflict, yet there are times of conflicts where we should be praising the Lord the most. Uh, in, in those times of hard uh, confrontation, in those times of frustration, in those times of stress, that's probably where we need to begin to praise God the most because the three things I'm going to share with you tonight, praise will do these three things, and I hope that this motivates you to begin to do it more. First of all, <clears throat> the reason why we should be praising God probably a lot more during the time of conflict than any other time is because praise, number one, it builds your faith. It causes your faith to be amplified. It causes your faith, the Bible says, to abound. And the second motivation uh, to begin to praise God, not just during conflicts, but begin to make it a life of thanksgiving and praise. The second reason that we're going to teach on the night is that it runs off the devil. And I tell you what, there's a devil loose and that devil wants to kill, steal, and destroy, reap havoc in your life. And I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, praise will confront that. And here's a third reason that really, really ministers to me is that praise ministers to God. The Bible talks about in Revelation how we were created for his pleasure. And uh, I'll never forget when, when uh, my children would come to me and say, you're a good daddy. Man, that was, that was pleasant to me. And so as we talk about and teach on these things tonight, uh, you're going to find that praise is going to help you to, to focus in on the right things and to, and to keep you in a place where you need to be. Praise shouldn't be the caboose that follows along the circumstances in your life. It should be the engine 
it should be the engine driving your life. It's not the, when I say caboose, I'm referring to a, 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 a train. It shouldn't be the thing that comes up at the end. It shouldn't be, well, I'm going to praise God now that all the circumstances have turned out right and everything's doing what it needs to be. It shouldn't be the, kabo the caboose in your life. It should be the engine. Praise should be something that's driving your life. It, 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 it changes your circumstances. Uh, and and that's, a, that's a thing that I'm learning more than, than, than ever before, is that the praise of God is, is, is praise and thanksgiving is something that I do in my life. It is a result of my relationship with him that I'm praising him. And I'm not having to wait to see how it turned out. I'm not having to wait to say, well, that thing turned out well or, or oh, that didn't turn out so well. Uh, no, I want praise to be the engine that drives my life. I want praise to be the engine that, that, that um, really motivates me and causes me to just live this life of praise. It will change your circumstances. Let's go over to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7. Colossians 2, 6 through 7. Let's read that in the King James and the New Living Translation. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7. I want you to notice something here because I really do believe that your, your faith is going to be amplified when we begin to, to, to operate in praise. Notice what he says in these two verses of Scripture. In King James first, he says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, he says, So walk in him. Verse 7, Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. Established in the faith as you have been taught and then he says, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. So not only walking in faith, but seeing that faith increase in thanksgiving. Look at this in the NLT. Um, he says, and now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Verse 7, he says, let your roots grow down into him. Praise God. And let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. I, I, I believe that when, when an individual begins to operate in thanksgiving and, and operate in praise, it will, it will cause your faith to overflow. It will cause your, your faith to be amplified and it will increase your faith. And so, uh, praise is, is a high form of faith, I believe. I believe it's something that if you do it, you're going you're gonna to see some amazing things happen as, you know, your faith goes to appropriate and take possession of what Jesus has already made available. There are lots of Christians um, that they may know that certain things have been made available to them by Jesus Christ, but have not yet really learned and mastered how to take possession of those things. And so during difficult trials, abounding in faith includes praising God as you wait for the manifestation of his power to bring you through. And this is during, it's, it's during times that we're going through right now. It's during the time of a pandemic. It's during the time of trying to you know, figure out how you're going to pay the rent and all your money spent, a little bit to buy some food, baby need to pass you. This is the time to praise God. This is not, well, I'm going to praise God because I feel good, or I'm going to praise God because we're in church and I just, no, 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 no. This thing is a weapon. This thing is an amplifier. This is a high form of faith. Just think about that. For me to praise God for the manifestations that I know will come forth, that's a high faith, man. That's a high form of faith. And during difficult trials, abounding in faith or increasing in faith during those difficult trials. And that includes praising God as you wait for the manifestations, as you wait for his power to bring you through those situations. In fact, look at Psalms 34 and verse 1. Psalms 34 and verse 1. I believe that praise will cause your faith to thrive. Again, amplify or to thrive. And that, that just really got my attention that I'm not, I'm not just praising God, you know, for show. 
I mean, when you understand how, how this works and, and you understand that this needs to be born out of a relationship and, and, and you get deeper in him. Notice that scripture in Colossians. We're getting deeper with him. We're understanding him. And then out of that, out of that, praise is born. I mean, when you begin to understand how much God loves you, then you're going to want to, out of that relationship and understanding, you want to want you want to read those love letters. That's the Bible, and then you're gonna you're gonna want to go and and uh, and 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 talk to the one that wrote those love letter letters. That's prayer, and then you want to go and tell somebody about uh, this love and, and and what God has already done. That's evangelism, and, and and what I'm trying to do is just yes, I understand all of those little you know, religious positions and all that, but I, I want to simplify it. Let's, everything coming from that relationship, this is what Christianity is about. It is the opportunity for us to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I believe that out of that relationship, praise is born. You get to start looking at what God has done and how he's delivered you. Out of that relationship, that thanksgiving is born. And then all of those things proceed out of that relationship that has given birth to all of that. I like what he says in verse 1. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Man, what happens to a person who sets his mind that says, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times, the good times and the bad times, and I'm going to make sure that his praise is continually in my mouth. You know, one of the things I've been, been doing and just recognizing is that I'll spend, I'll spend a, a large amount of my prayer time just thanking and praising God for what he has done and what he's going to do. And I, I, I have times where I'm thanking and praising God, and, and, and when I get up from prayer, my, my, my face is wet because I, I didn't recognize that tears were just flowing out because I really mean it. I'm not, I'm not doing this because it's the, oh, we've discovered a new mechanical step that could possibly prosper you. That's not why I'm doing it. It is something that is being done because I am experiencing a real, genuine, intimate relationship with him. And now my praise is born out of that. And it's genuine, and it's real, and it's effective. It is a relationship that is there when I'm up and when I'm down and when things are good and when things are not so good. And then this is what I believe that this scripture here reminds me of. I will bless the Lord at all times. That is a person who has decided I've made a decision. I'm going to bless the Lord. I'm going to bless him when I feel good, when I don't feel good. I'm going to bless him when nobody's knocking at the door, when depression's knocking at the door. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, my God, I, I want you to make that decision. And some of you say, well, it's hard to make that decision. Well, it's not if you know him. It's not if you have a relationship with him. It's not if you begin to recognize that all these things, all these good things have come from him, and he's been a blessing in my life, and I got to, I got to bless him. I, I, I'm still reminded, that, you know, I have a whole new respect for Job. It's like, man, this guy, has, he made his mind up, God, I'm not leaving you. Now, he might not have had a clear understanding of, you know, what the cause was and all of that, but... You know, and which makes it even better, I mean, for him to think, well, maybe this came from God and I'm going to praise you anyway, you know? There's some people that are ready to quit on God if he just don't answer a little prayer or, or give them a, a little something they ask about. But this guy would not quit. This guy, the Bible says he shaved his head after losing everything and he worshiped God. He made a statement, man, he's, though you slay me, yet, yet will I serve thee. I mean, you know, I, I can excuse all of the, the, you know, his understanding or lack of understanding in some areas, but the thing that ministers to me is that it's like, I'm not going anywhere, God. I'm not going anywhere. It wasn't what I had that, that was the foundation of my relationship with you. It wasn't what you, what you necessarily did that was the foundation of my relationship with you. I'm in it for you. We, we keep going back to that. This is something that I want to emphasize over and over and over and over again so that if religion has, has kind of, you know, led you away from that relationship, I mean, this is what, this is, you know, I was reading a scripture this morning, Deuteronomy 28 and 10. He says, they will call you by my name, and then they will be afraid of you. Christian. Praise God. They'll be afraid of you, or, or uh, Hebrew, they'll, they'll favor you, 
they will they will respect you uh, they will reverence you and and favoring God will, will come out of, out of your life and even from other people because you are a blessing praise God in fact you are a blessing going somewhere to happen I speak that over you right now man they call you by his name you are a blessing going somewhere to happen praise God thank you Jesus amen and so the word tells us to praise God because it, it makes us focus on what God says rather than our problem. And I believe that. I believe if you'll start praising God today, it'll cause you to focus more on God's Word. It'll cause you to focus more on what God has to say about some things rather than you focusing on your problems. Everybody's got some issues, but you've got to decide what you're going to focus on. And praise is going to help direct your focus on God's promises. And uh, that, that's, that's worth it right there uh, as far as I'm concerned. I, I want to focus in on that. There, there are certain days, you know, Taff and I walking around the house and she'll say, did you hear such and such and so? And I'm thinking, nah, I'm focusing on this right now. And, 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 you know, we may make mention of some things that are going on and, and then we get our focus in the right place. We don't want to dwell in those spots so long. I want to focus on what God has to say about it. I want to focus on his, his promises. And, and in the midst of the time where people are saying, put the Bible down, I ain't never going to do that. I am never going to put the Word of God down. That's what I live by. That's what I stand on. That's what I'm going to keep. Praise God. You know, the Bible is so, so good. Its words are, are nourishing uh, factors in my life that causes me to be able to go through and to make it through things. So I want you to start, I'm talking to each of you, each of you, especially the Wednesday night crew, I'm talking to you right now, start praising God. And it will redirect your attention to God's will for you, and it's going to build your faith to receive, I believe, a miracle. So let's start praising Him. Somebody says, how do I do that? Honey, it don't take a lot for you to come up with something to praise God for. All you got to do is open your eyes. You can praise God for having sight. And then you can look around with those eyes and you can praise God for having this. Or you can you know, go sit down and eat and you can praise God that you have food at your table. And, and you can go look at your bills and you can praise God that you have the, uh, the supply to take care of these bills. And you can look at your children and they're all healthy. You can praise God for that. And while you're walking around the house, you can praise God that you can walk around the house. And if it's a pretty day, you can praise God for that being a pretty day. There's just something that happens in the life of a Christian where you allow God to redirect your attention to his will for your life. And then, he, you, you know, he'll build your faith up, man, and, and you'll receive whatever I believe you need at that particular time. And so your life is going in the direction, I believe, your life goes in the direction of your, of, your, of your most dominant thoughts. Your life will go in the direction of, of your most dominant thoughts. What, what, what have you been thinking about? What have you been thinking about, lady? And have you allowed those thoughts to dominate your thinking? Uh, look, at, look at Psalms 23 and verse 7. You're very familiar with this scripture. I believe your life is going in the direction of your dominant thoughts. What have you been thinking about? I have, I have talked to people over the last couple of weeks who've allowed their emotions and their, and their thinking to be dominated by all of the things that are going on in the world. You've got to be careful. Uh, you've got to be careful. If you're going to be useful, you've got to be careful about what you do in your private time so that you can see the fruit in your public time. But look at what he says here in Proverbs 23, verse 7. Excuse me, I said Psalms, Proverbs 23, verse 7. And what it says is, it's as, a, as a man thinketh, comma, in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh, comma, in his heart, so is he. So you are going to be a result of the, the dominant thoughts in your life. What are, what, what are those thoughts that are dominating your life? And I started thinking, if, if I'm going to be dominated by thoughts, I want, I want the Word to dominate my thinking. I want to think more. I want more God's Word to be in my thought life. And I want God's Word to dominate my thought. I want the promises of God to dominate my thoughts. 
And so whatever you think about and focus your attention on determines the course of your life. I believe that. I've seen that done. I have testimony after testimony about that. And something so simple as, you know, changing what I'm thinking about, changing my focus. Bible says attend to, to, his, to, to his word. And so what are you thinking about? What, what, what's your focus? What are you focusing your attention on? That's going to determine the course of your life. And I started believing that, and I, and I started making a change. When I first, you know, heard that and realized that, I thought, ah, oh, that's, that, then, you know, whatever, that, that's, you know, what is that? And, and you got to be careful not to exalt things that are less important over things that are more important. This, this word is more important. This word is more important. And, you know, if, I, if I'm thinking crazy things and crazy thoughts, that's going to be one thing. But when I allow my thinking to be governed by God's word, the course of my life is going to be, is going to go, going to, going to be determined and I'm going to go the right way. Somebody says, well, I don't believe that. That's just words. Well, see, that's probably why you are where you are right now, because you're not going back f further enough in, in, into the thing, the roots. The, the roots are determining the fruit in your life. The roots are determining, you know, why you do what you do, why you say what you say, why you feel like you feel, why you act like you act. And, you know, whether you believe in a God or not, whether you believe in a devil or not, a heaven or a hell or not, it's, it's, it's still true. You're going to have to allow your thinking to be on the promises of God so that the course of your life can be set. So, I thank God. I thank God uh, for the answer and, and not the problem. I thank God for the answer and not the problem. And sometimes it feels weird saying praise the Lord concerning a weird thing, but I'm praising God for the answer, not the problem. And my praise and thanksgiving for the answer is going to amplify my faith so that I can one day see that answer come because I've got faith that is complete because I added some praise to it. Now, if you aren't praising God, even before you see the physical manifestation of what you're believing for, then I don't think your faith is complete. I think there's something, there's something that is said when in the middle of believing God for a thing, and it may not even be working out, and it may not even seem like it's, it's going to show up. There's something to be said. There's something that completes your faith when in the middle of that whole process you say, praise the Lord. In the, middle, in the middle of the whole thing, you say, God, I give you praise. God, I thank you. Now, you, you have an option of saying some other stuff. You can say what you want to say. You're a free moral agent. You know, you can say all kinds of things, but there's just something to be said about an individual who will praise God in the midst of believing God for the manifestation, and that manifestation hadn't showed up, and you say, Lord, I give you praise. I believe your faith is, is complete. I have had situations over and over in my life where, you know, you know, I, I, I got to, first of all, you got to be careful not to call what I'm preaching on insignificant concerning your situation. We constantly try to take the Word of God and the things of God and constantly put them in an insignificant role or an insignificant place when they are probably more significant than the plan you came up with, that they're probably more significant than the action you plan on, on taking. I, I, I want to go there. I want to, I, God, his word, his, my time spent with him, my attention put on him, th th those are significant things. Those are things that I will not allow to leave my life. Uh, and, and in this day and time, you just got to be careful that you don't let somebody shame you out of your position in Christ. Shame you out of what you believe. Shame you out of praising God. Praise the Lord. What you praising the Lord for? You know, and I'm thinking, brother, that ain't going to change me. And, 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 and I'm believing God that you're going to be strong on this. You're, you're going you're gonna to praise him unashamedly, praise the Lord. And, and, and I'm not talking about doing cartwheels in front of everybody. And, 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 yeah, I'm not trying to bring attention to myself. I'm trying to give that attention to him. I'm trying to give that pleasure to him. I'm trying to give that praise to him. It's not about me. It's about all that he has done and is doing in my life.
It's important to establish a lifestyle of praise and confessions. Satan wants us to focus on our problems. However, when we give God the praise, we defeat the enemy and win. Focus on what God says rather than our problem. I believe if you'll start praising God today, it'll cause you to focus more on God's Word. It'll cause you to focus more on what God has to say about some things rather than you focusing on your problems. But you've got to decide what you're going to focus on. Praise is going to help direct your focus on God's promises. I'm never going to put the Word of God down. Grow in your walk with God today by ordering Creflo Dollar's Power Pack 3 message series, The Power of Praise and Confessions, and the bonus Daily Faith Confession CD, all for just $25. US Get yours today by calling the number on your screen, scanning the QR code, or visiting our e-store at CreflodollarMinistries.org. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the mortgage person says. Have faith in God. If you can see the invisible, He can do the impossible. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. When you think about what could have happened to me, what should have happened to me, and now look at what's available to me, that's enough for me to tear something up right now all by itself. I got to give him the glory. He saved us. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. Know that your contributions do not go unnoticed. Understand also that when you sow financial seeds into Creflo Dollar Ministries, you actually assist us in ministering to the physical and spiritual needs of millions around the world. You help us build schools, drip irrigation systems, and homes for pastors. You also help us provide supplies for children and the elderly. We thank you, and we continue to pray for you daily. Log on to our website at missions.creflodollarministries.org to see all the work we do at Creflo Dollar Global Missions. Thank you for your support. Creflo and Taffy Dollar love connecting with you. And here at World Changers, we understand the importance of using technology to do just that. We're constantly working to bring the gospel of Christ to thousands of viewers and followers around the world. And we want you to get involved. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We want to make the word of grace available throughout every voice of social media. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.